Good morning. Today we're going to read chapters three and four of our book. And if you remember what we've read so far, uh, Noah is looking for his sister Megan. So she spotted the monkeys from her fort that night when she was looking for her glasses. And all these strange things have happened since then. So um, Megan disappeared. The bird brought Noah that message. And then in chapter three, Noah's going to start doing a little more exploring, trying to figure out what happened to his sister. So chapter three is titled A Tale of Wonder, T-A-L-E, like a story. <clears throat> the school bell rang and Noah raced for the door, not bothering to slow down when Mrs. Bless called, kids, walk. Noah didn't have time for walking. He only had three hours before his parents would be home, so he needed to move fast. Since Megan's disappearance, Noah's parents had been working late, leading a search campaign out of a friend's house in downtown Clarksville. Considering all that his parents had been through with Megan, they'd originally had concerns about Noah's walking from school and being by himself at the house. They'd finally decided to allow it as long as Noah promised to walk home with his friends. And rather being home by himself, Noah almost always stayed at Richie's until his parents picked him up after leaving the search headquarters for the day. Today, however, Noah needed to break the rules in the hallway. He tossed his books into his locker, scanned the crowd to make sure Ella and Richie couldn't see him, and then squirmed his way to the main exit. Outside, he ran across the schoolyard, kicking up gravel and dust. He hadn't slept since the bird's strange visit the previous night. He still couldn't make sense of what had happened. Did it mean something, or had a bird simply flown through his window and dropped a piece of trash in his room? Whatever it might be, there would be no harm in paying Mr. Talltail a visit. So remember the note that the bird brought to Noah mentioned visiting Mr. Talltail. My hair is doing something in it. Um, so Mr. Talltail is at the zoo. <laughs> I'm making it work. Okay. <clears throat> he walked down the drive, turned onto Jenkins Street, and walked alongside the concrete wall of the zoo. After rounding the corner onto Walker's Boulevard, he reached the zoo and bolted for the entrance, where he flashed his membership card to a startled attendant and crashed through the turnstile. Because the day was so cold, the zoo was nearly empty. Noah stormed across the pavement, weaving in and out of the exhibits. He'd been to the zoo so many times that he knew the shortest path to the Langer house without thinking about it. When he reached the small, ivy-draped building, he pushed through the entrance, turned a corner, and nearly crashed into a small group of people. The exhibit had no traditional bars or concrete walls. An enormous dome-shaped net kept the langers inside where they relaxed on trees, looking bored. Their tails were so long that no one wondered how the animals managed to keep them from becoming knotted in the branches. Mr. Tall Tail had the longest tail of all. As the monkey rested on a high branch, his tail dangled below his rear end like a furry snake. Now that Noah was inside the exhibit, he felt a bit foolish. What did he expect to see? The visitors gradually wandered off and the building fell silent. The Langers turned their eyes toward Noah occasionally, but they showed little interest in him. S Noah said, Mr. Talltail. The monkey ignored him. He was more interested in a large leaf that was trapped in the ceiling of the net. Mr. Talltail, can you hear me? The monkey picked a closer leaf, popped it in his mouth, and chewed casually. Um, okay, Noah muttered, scratching his head. Why am I talking to a monkey? The entrance door swung open and a security guard stepped inside. He had a thatch of fire engine red hair and plump lips and his face and arms were covered in freckles. Hello, Noah said, feeling stupid and embarrassed. After all, this man had nearly caught him talking to a monkey. The guard didn't answer and an awkward silence filled the air. He strolled past Noah, observing him skeptically. Noah stared at the Langers, pretending that he was enjoying himself. The sound of the guard's footsteps softened as he rounded the exhibit. 
Finally, Noah heard the exit door open. He was alone again with the Langers. Talk about creepy, Noah mumbled. He glanced at Mr. Talltale once more and said, Nothing to show me, huh? Mr. Talltale stared into space and idly chewed his leaf, working his jaw from side to side. Feeling like an idiot, Noah decided to leave and turn toward the exit. At that moment, something fell on his shoulder, and in a reflex reaction, Noah swatted his back. He swung around and yelped. A long, black, furry thing slithered across his forearm. It jumped off and floated in the air. Then, Noah realized what it was. It was Mr. Talltail's tail. Seeing Noah turn to leave, the langur had leaped up to the front of the net, deliberately poked out his tail, and brushed it over Noah's shoulder. What's more, a slip of paper was wrapped in the tip. Noah knew it was crazy, but Mr. Talltail was handing him the paper. The monkey waved his tail as if to say, Are you going to take this or what? Noah crept forward. He reached out his trembling arm and snatched the paper. What is this? he said. Mr. Talltail leaped back up to the trees and relaxed in his previous spot in the branches. He picked another leaf and chewed. His dark eyes gazed blankly into the distance as if nothing had happened. For a second, Noah thought he'd imagined the whole incident, but the paper was in his hand, crumpled, ripped, and spotted. A few langur hairs even clung to it. Noah opened it carefully. The moment he saw the message inside, he thought he'd faint. The front door creaked open again, and he thrust the paper into his pocket. For the second time, the red-headed security guard walked in. He eyed Noah suspiciously as he approached. His heels angrily smacked the floor. What Noah had read on the paper was making his stomach roll and his head ache. You okay, kid? You ain't looking too hot, the guard said. Yeah, fine. Noah was anything but fine. He could barely breathe. I gotta go, he managed to say. He hurried for the door, slammed through it, and burst into the cool air. Have a nice day, the guard called out. The door crashed as it closed, gasping. Noah leaned against a wall. He pulled out the paper and looked at it again. It was red with purple lines and blue stars in the corners. He'd seen it before. Deep breaths, he told himself, It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. But even as he repeated the words, he didn't believe them for a second. So think about where he had seen that paper before. So remember, after Megan saw the monkeys that night from her treehouse, she went back into her room and started writing in her journal. And that's how she described the paper that was in her journal. Okay, chapter four, the mysterious clue to a mysterious zoo. Noah sat on a bench in a quiet part of the zoo. He glanced over both shoulders to make sure nobody was around and pulled Mr. Tall Tail's paper out of his pocket. Neat, cursive handwriting covered every inch. All the letters were joined by smooth arcs, and the dots on the eyes were carefully placed. Though the ink was faded and smeared, he knew the penmanship. It was Megan's. There was no mistaking it. Noah glanced around again. Still, no one was nearby. A wind swept across the zoo. Noah took a breath, gathered his courage, and read the page. It started in the middle of a sentence. Keep seeing birds in the forest of flight exhibit that aren't supposed to be there. A bird chart near the entrance has a complete list of birds, but a few that I see aren't even on it. Then, every few days, some of those birds aren't around anymore. On top of that, an old lady who works there keeps following me around, asking me what I'm doing. She's creepy. The bottom of the page was missing. Noah flipped it over. The writing at the top was too smeared to read. The words he could decipher began in the middle of a sentence and the middle of a new thought. Can't write it down without feeling stupid, but I know what I saw. There's a wall with holes in it. I think the holes are supposed to give the birds a private place to build their nests. They're supposed to be like cracks and crannies in rocks and mountains and stuff. I got curious. I found a bench near the wall and sat there a while. 
pretending to read a pamphlet. After an hour or so, I saw something. There was a bunch, and then it stops. So, can y'all see that on the page, how some of the words are in italics? So, that's what Noah read on the paper. The page was torn. Noah flipped the paper over repeatedly, hoping to find something in the margins. He dropped against the back of the bench and stared into space. What was going on? What did all this mean? Why did Megan begin making trips to the zoo without informing the family? And how had a langer got hold of a page from her diary? Noah's first instinct was to tell somebody, an adult at the zoo. But Megan had been suspicious of the zoo worker, and hadn't he just had a strange encounter with a security guard? What did all of this mean? The leaves fell around him like colorful snowflakes. He was stunned and confused. I don't get it, he muttered. I don't get it at all. But one thing Noah did understand was that he had to act, and he had to act quickly. In two hours, the zoo would close. That would be more than enough time to take a tour of the forest of flight and perhaps to examine the wall with the unusual crannies and holes. Okay, so you can't send me comments through YouTube because I have it set for um, kids, but you can send me predictions and your thoughts through email or through text. But tomorrow I'll be back to read the next two chapters, which will be chapters five and six.